summer came and scorched my arms, scorched my eyes and scorched my mind. I can't believe it's all behind me now. What it was, I cannot say. Most days almost melt away, and it's all begun to fade on me now. Now the cool. I was thinking about reaching Nirvana, but I was plagued by a few petty crimes. I thought I could buy out all my problems, but I was short a few thin dimes. And I know I take it way too fast, and I know I wander a crooked path, but deep down each day I'm feeling glad. Living inside me is so tough to scare away. When I see it coming, I'll look the other way to a better
First I need to work on my karma And the only way to affect my karma Is to change all the things about my dharma But peace comes from within Not the actions of you or your friends You cannot live life free of sin But you can close your eyes and be Traveling with a wild man, it's gonna get me in. Yeah. Whiskey, women, cigarettes, breaking hearts and taking bets, living harder than the rest. No remorse and no regrets, he puts his soul to the test. But he lives to be alive I just hope he can survive When there's a party almost every night Real life can pass you by And it doesn't taste like wine I've been traveling with a wild man One step ahead of Johnny Lyle City lights and barroom brawls Be coming down the lonely fall One day you're bound to hit the wall But you won't see him crawl He'll make it through standing tall Wild It's so easy to freak when the road seems to set you free. Oh, it's your destiny that you won't remember in a week. But he lived to be alive, and you're gonna see him shine with me right there playing by his side.
still sets him free. I'm still right there playing by his side, the only place that I'll ever be. Cause the wild man I speak of is me. That's right, the wild man is me. Wild
another night alone Wondering what you're gonna do You had enough of the fun And way too much of the truth Lightning struck the TV You said goodbye to your blues Think you just needed that shock To get you out of bed And get you back out on the window pane, sun's gonna shine on a brand new day, cause you gotta believe, that things are gonna get better, you gotta believe, we're gonna make it through this stormy weather, and I'll be to the Motown Studios uh, in downtown Morgan, North Carolina. Uh, we're here today with Chris Cates, uh, singer, songwriter, and local celebrity. Uh, so what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, Thank absolutely. You. I think thanks for coming by. Uh, so uh, I want to talk with you today about some of your influences, uh, about maybe when you started playing music, how old you were, and a couple <coughs> of other things. So let's start with that. How old, how old were you when you started playing? Uh, before I started playing, I started editing tape when I was probably seven years old. I had a micro cassette recorder and I would take like Curtis Blow albums like uh, Eight Million Stories in a Naked City and I'd mix it up with like Electric Kingdom. Cool. I remember on my first mix I did uh, the Electric Kingdom. I mixed Electric Kingdom with Curly Shuffle, the Curly Shuffle. Okay. I lived in the 80s. <laughs> it was a play off Curly from the Three Stooges. So it's like electric, the electric Curly Shuffles would be like, the electric Curly Shuffles. <laughs> that's, a, that's my first memories of like editing tape for music. And then I got with Jeremy Lomano, who I still play music and do business stuff with today. And sure. we started uh, making albums, records, full length records at probably 11. And wow. we'd make cassettes just on keyboard and drums. My brother had a drum set, so we started making full length records then and then you know moved on to junior high band it had a band we started heavy metal band we started in junior high called armageddon and played our first real gig at probably 13 maybe wow. or something like that with that band and Dang, then you got at it early man yeah we played to 2,000 people at a, the fireworks one year wow you know, at, you know we were little kids jeez and then our first you know when we first really started getting paid to play music was probably 15 and you know playing benefits and paid gigs and bars at 15 and 16. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and on from there, you know, probably 1,500 gigs to 2,000 gigs later, you know, 
here we are. Wow, no yeah. kidding. So uh, now, did you now did you spend some time overseas in Europe playing a little bit? Didn't you? I did. We did uh, two different uh, German tours in the early two thousands cool. uh, with the uh, with a band, my band Parakeet Nelson mixed with another kind of avant garde jazz band. We did two different tours, two years in a row, and I've played um, in five countries over there, just or four countries over there. Um, you know, on my own individually, just playing small venues or whatever. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Not really on tours, just going over there and playing. Sure. You know, and trying to drum up yeah. business. It still and, counts. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some busking in Europe, you know. The, yeah. The romantic busking of Europe, you know, which is cool. not really romantic. but <laughs> <laughs> You got to do it. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, everything. Yeah. Music business is, is hard, <laughs> for the, except for the lucky few. Yeah, no kidding, yeah, right? So. No kidding. So tell me about some of your influences, like uh, when could you tell um, early on, as far as a musician, like that you were going to be doing this probably for the rest of your life? Oh man, I think probably, you know, early on my influences were what my brothers was into, you know, um, was, you know, early Iron Maiden and stuff like that. I really, you know, we loved Iron Maiden, so we started playing, started playing drums to Iron Maiden and wow, stuff like that at an early age and uh, played drums for four or five years and then I switched actually I heard a local musician here from Morgan Daryl Corley came and played for uh, my junior high at Oak Hill Junior High okay and he played Mr. Bojangles and it blew me away and that was really that was when I was like I'm gonna start playing guitar and singing sure Mr. Corley yeah Yeah. I booked him a couple times that's cool he's a great great guy great musician I saw him play a couple years ago here and and then the, uh, we opened for the past, who eventually became Chop Copperhead. So, oh. so here in Neil Carswell and John Bird and those guys play. So yeah. I, that okay. made me immediately after that gig, I switched to guitar. And, uh, so, and for those for those uh, listeners and viewers that don't know about Copperhead, they're a local Morganton band that ended up getting signed, right? Yeah, they got signed. They had a, a deal with Mercury. Yeah, and, big, uh, it was a great, great album. The whole thing, yeah. yeah. So that's a pretty big deal. Wow, that's pretty, that's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. And I'd already played some guitar and was writing the songs on guitar for the band, already but played drums, and after that I just completely switched. And about that time, uh, Jeremy got me into Neil Young, and I became like kind of like a Neil Young guy, you know? So, sure. Uh, and Neil... My first seminal influence, you know, I think Neil Young, well, as far as for songwriting stuff, that kind of took me a different direction in songwriting. Yeah. And then in that vein, like kind of James Taylor too, just because James Taylor has Morganton roots, and sure. I, I got into him. And so I learned a different kind of more of the jazzy approach to guitar, which is kind of why my songs aren't really very Neil Young. They're more kind of jazzy, like Neil Young, but I, I mean, like James Taylor, but I don't really finger pick or play like him mm-hmm. or really write like him, but. Um, you know, those those are two main ones, and the next phase in my development was probably Al Green, and so nice. you know, hearing Al Green from the Pulp Fiction soundtrack. Oh yeah, nice. That changed the way I've sung ever since. You know, it, it brought gave me a new register. You know, I definitely started seeing more soul and R and B. You know, which is like you know what we do with the band. We play a lot of rock, classic rock. You know, we're still doing the R and B stuff. You know, that was kind of based off that that uh, Al Green influence and sure. then, you know there's been a, a few people that'll change my directions you know since then just in my approach you know from Hank the third you know who did it you know a couple, 10 years ago and uh, you know I, yep. I you know I like it I listen to all kinds of music so I you know I'm constantly getting influenced by stuff um, all the time yes. and I would think those are my main ones you know the you know. That's the way to do it, keeping your horizons broadened. Yeah, you can slip Slayer in there too. Sure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, I don't write nice. much like. Uh, uh, so tell me a little bit about what it's like um, as a musician um, and uh, being a father, becoming a father. Because uh, I think uh, you have two little uh, twin girls. Yeah, I do, mind. yeah. Um, Correct, awesome. You know, it's made me more diligent. It's, actually, it's made me focus on, honestly, more on recording than on live music just because I don't have as much time to, you know, play live shows, and I, you know, I don't have quite have the desire to be gone, and, you know, playing shows, you know, all weekend and everything like that, so, but I record every night, the day my kids were born, uh, they took a picture of uh, my kids in the hospital, and from one of the images of Joy, 
I created a whole album out of that, and that was my first classical album, so it's all classical music. It's called Music for Newborns. Oh, cool. So that was my first endeavor after they were born, and you know, since then I've, I've done two or three albums and then gotten into the kids' song yeah. realm. Uh-huh. You know, song did a video called Egg Sandwich and a song you know with, the, with with my kids featuring it, and I have a bunch more kids songs. I just gotta finish them and put them out. You know, sure. Pee pee in the potty is gonna be a huge hit. That sounds like yeah. a smashing success. Yeah, I can't exactly. wait to hear that. Exactly. That's uh yeah yeah. So yeah, everybody keep your eye out for uh, for future Chris Kate's uh, 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 children's songs. That sounds like awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, so, uh, tell me a little bit uh, about your dad. I think uh, as far as Morganton scene's concerned, he's a little bit of a local celebrity. Definitely. You know, he's kind of always been a character. Um, you know, he was a teacher, a popular teacher here in Morganton for many years. Then he, you know, he got into politics in the 80s and uh, uh, was chairman of the county commissioners for a while and, you know, famously got his tie cut off in, like, 81, and it made national news during a... Um, commissioner's meeting, they were rezoning or something, and some people were upset, and a guy came and cut his tie off wow. during the thing, and it made national news, and Jeez. so he always wears a bow tie now. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah bow, that's uh, where the bow tie came from. But he's just, uh, you know, nowadays he's just, uh, uh, he's a good promoter of Morganton and the Morganton music scene, you know, honestly, he knows all the musicians, and he's uh, oh, yeah. kind of, you know, good promoter for me, that's for sure. Sure, yeah, <laughs> so. no, he's, he's a blast, man, he's always fun to run into out, out in the streets of, uh, of Burke County yeah. and Morganton. That's nice. Um, <laughs> tell me about too uh, his uh, in his uh, his love for cars, specifically uh, <laughs> those uh, those MGs. <laughs> oh. You know the MG disease is a disease <laughs> that few get wrangled into. You know <laughs> anybody that knows about British cars, there they run on a mile to mile basis. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, so. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I know. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure your mom probably wasn't the uh, happiest about the MG no. bug, whatever it be. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about maybe some uh, big uh, acts you've opened up for famous people you've met. Anything of note that comes off the top of your head, man? You know, I met I met Neil Young. That was cool. Wow. Um, and Frank San Pedro's guitar player. He's wow. a really nice guy. Uh, I met James Taylor randomly in a Italian restaurant in Boone one time. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> Random. You know, uh, uh, all the people in Athens, I lived in Athens, Georgia for eight years and ran a music business there. So, of course, I, you run into REM and I worked with Widespread Panic some and uh, Soundtribe Sector 9 and Kevin Kenny. Um, wow. You know, different folks like that. You know, all the Athens B fifty twos people. I've you know, sure come across their path. And I think you worked with Danger Mouse, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Brian Burton yeah. was one of my f- first clients. With Danger Mouse. He was a good guy. We did a lot of. We did five projects together. Wow. Um, then he left and moved to London and did the famous Gray album and like blew up crazy. And yeah, yeah. Now he's in. Now, now he produced U 2s album. Yeah, yeah, wow, wow. Yeah. Is that what he's doing? Up? Wow. Yeah, he produced Chili Peppers and U two, all kinds of huge. Jeez, people. that's what he's and, up to now. Yeah, he's a good guy. I mean, he came through Athens and asked about me last time he was there to, to a friend of mine. So it's cool. He's not forgetting his roots. Sure, you know. Yeah, well, that's and, neat. Uh, yeah, Maybe of course. You guys could work on a collab at some point. I know. You know, <laughs> I, I I need to try to get up with him when he's playing live somewhere because I think he plays with the Black Lips. Or one of those bands, okay. like that. Cool. Or Black Keys, or somebody. Like, not me. I, anyway, but you know, I've opened yeah. for over the years. Just you know, you've randomly open for people. Like open for the Avid Brothers back when they were before they were big. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, yeah, they played a lot around here before they got. Yeah, famous. and I believe you played. You're playing. We played that gigs. Asheville Earth Day. Oh you know, yeah, probably yeah, two thousand. Right. Eight or four or six or something like no, it's probably like 2006. Asheville Earth Day, but probably. Yeah, we have for them and Colonel Bruce. Yep, Colonel Bruce and Jimmy Herring, you know them, and um, you know, over the, you put me on the spot over the years. I've been for different people, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. I was just say anything that might come off the top yeah. of your head, but yeah, that's 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 uh, more than I was expecting to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't know you met Neil. I bet that was a life changing. It event. was. He's not. He, we actually. There's all these power cables and stuff from the venue, and we were like, Jason Peeler and me, the drummer, you know, been playing with forever. We we like went through all this dangerous electric equipment up to the fence to 
to holler at Neil and give him our cassette tape, like from our, <laughs> our album we just made. Nice. And we gave it to him, and he was super cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cassette tape definitely tells how dated that story is. Yeah. You know? It's awesome. <laughs> the first time we, we didn't see Neil, we saw him in Chapel Hill, and I don't know, on his, rust, on his, la, on his Ragged Glory tour. And so we had a cassette tape, and so we went down to the sound man before the show. It was like, will you give this to Neil? This is our tape from our... You know, high school band that we, you know, we made it. Fred Rumfeld Studio, the uh, Silver Plated Six Shooters was the name of the album. And, wow. uh, you know, had the sound man. He's like, okay, I'll do it. And then we walked off and looked back, and he just like tossed it in the uh. trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was probably not the first one of those he yeah, got that day. Yeah, probably. exactly. <laughs> so, you know, good music business learning. Yeah, thing. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, at least when I met Neil, he was nice enough to take it and put it in his pocket. You know, right before, before we probably threw it away. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, that's. Goes to show you guys, it's, hard, it's a tough business to get into, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the music business in a nutshell. Yeah, it is. That right there. Yep. I always heard if you uh, if you want to be a millionaire in the music industry, start as a multimillionaire. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's, there's reasons why some people are, are, are big, you know, I could name a few, but we'll... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so uh, before we get out of here, why don't uh, you tell me a little bit about uh, some of your websites where people can uh, get your uh, your stuff, your music, uh, merch, uh, yeah. any kind of upcoming stuff? Yeah, of course, uh, chriscates.com. It's, it's kind of always kind of ongoing. It's, um, you, it's got a link to everything. It's got ridiculously like a 10,000-page bio on it and stuff. It's called the overextensive Chris Cates site, so it's just got like, I'm doing the opposite of everybody else and just put like too much content. On. Oh, you're just putting it all up. Yeah, but it's also a it's also a blog. It started with me doing a song a day in 2010, so I, I like it started with that blog, and so there's all the 365 songs from that year plus another two or three hundred songs that I've published and different stuff. And um, I have a, basically now I have a, a music publishing company called Mealtown Brown Publishing, and so I'm a music publisher. Um, which is kind of the same as a record company, pretty much, but I'm just calling it publishing. Right. Just to keep it in one roof, because I'm <clears throat> basically just publishing my own songs and releasing them. So, I, but there's, you can also find everything on iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. On my website, I've actually been making, starting to put out specific Spotify playlists for the different genres of music uh, I, I play in to kind of keep, that way people can listen to one type of music, because I put out, Music as Chris Cates, as Parakeet Nelson, um, as Gringo Rock is my heavy metal <laughs> persona. Um, my kids' persona is Captain Shenanigans, <laughs> and then I also put out as Mealtime Brown, and that's more of the um, electro hip hop style stuff. Sure, you know? sure. So Chris Cates is more uh, the uh, Rock to adult contemporary type stuff, and then Parakeet Nelson is more my fu the funk stuff. So cool. I've got a new Parakeet album about to pop. About to jump. Nice, yeah. nice, cool. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, uh, before we get out of here, I know um, you make a point, uh, have made a point in your career as, as a musician uh, to stay active in local, um, like uh, say charities, uh, fundraising for uh, for local. Um, uh, it, uh, community-based uh, issues. So talk a little bit about that. Definitely, you know, you got to give back um, <clears throat> as much as you can. And, you know, it's, it's, um, we play plenty of, me plenty of gigs for money, but if we can do something to, you know, add to uh, some sort of charity, you know, like this weekend we just did some stuff for the local uh, homeless shelter and women's shelter. Um, next month I'm, uh, you know, in Atlanta, I'm doing a show for uh, a as a uh, middle school just to raise money for you know kids meals and stuff like that so you know you gotta do what you can sure you know and you know it's it's always good it's an you know it's an opportunity to, for me it's an opportunity to play I like to play too so it's well, you know it's double double fun for me because I get to play sure. and I get to you know do something do it for a good cause right right you know? well I know definitely on behalf of uh, of Morganton uh, you know, we definitely appreciate all of yeah, all the yeah, love working, love working with Morgan to any way I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, thanks so much for coming out, Chris. Um, so, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for the new album getting ready to drop. And until next time, uh, this has been Motown Studios. Thanks. Hi, thanks for watching Motown Studios. Be sure to check back with us for brand new content every week. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and be sure to share uh, and tell all your friends that the best content on the Internet is coming out of Morganton, North Carolina, Motown Studios. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you very much. Wild man.